Hey everybody, welcome back to what is now the fifth episode in our series, Working Our Way Through the Heidelberg Catechism. Now, this series, I believe, will help you, all the kids of Ammon Valley and those who are listening, get to know who God is, who we are, and how our relationship with God can be restored. That's the whole point of the Christian faith. It's that God has made a way for our sinful humans to know Him, to be in communion with Him, to walk our whole lives with the peace that He offers us in Jesus Christ, Christ, and to share this with other people, to go beyond ourselves and to, to share this good news and this grace and this mercy from God. And last week we saw a little bit of the bad news, right? If you can remember... What we were looking at last week was this idea that we are all born in sin. We have a sinful nature. We've been sort of discussing this really for the past couple of weeks. And now we are turning to the fifth Lord's Day of the Heidelberg Catechism. And I know that sometimes this may be a little bit uh, too deep for you. Maybe you're wondering, Zach, this is a little much for me. I'm, I'm only seven years old or eight years old. How can I know what you're talking about? But I want you to know that this catechism is something I believe that you can understand. And so that's what this is all about. I really hope that as I continue to do these in the weeks to come, you will begin to have a real appreciation for what the catechism teaches. Because as I believe, as your pastor, the catechism does a very good job of summarizing what the Bible teaches from the beginning to the end about how we can know God. And so let's turn now to the fifth Lord's Day of our catechism. So this is question and answer 12. So listen closely. The catechism asks this, According to God's righteous judgment, we deserve punishment, both in this world and forever after. How then can we escape this punishment and return to God's favor? So the question is assuming that we are all sinful people, me and you. So how can we escape the punishment that we deserve uh, from God's just wrath and anger against sin? How can we escape that and return to God's good favor? In other words, how can we uh, become get on God's good side once again? No longer being under God's wrath, but now being covered by God's love. How can we return to this restored fellowship with God. And the question is answered in this way. God requires that his justice be satisfied. Therefore, whoever sins must pay their debt, in other words. So this is like a sinner who, or a criminal who maybe does something to go into jail. He must serve his time in jail by being there for maybe a year, maybe ten years. And once he has done that, then he has satisfied the debt that he owes. And so the Catechism says this, Therefore the claims of his justice must be paid in full, either by ourselves or by another. And so when we sin, someone has to pay for it. You can remember in the Old Testament, this is what, where the people of God would often be making sacrifices with different kinds of animals. Often it would be lambs. And so they would, when they made mistakes and had to confess their sins to God, they would bring an unblemished lamb before God to be sacrificed. This lamb would be killed, and it was the blood of this lamb that would cover the sin of the people. But the Catechism knows that lambs don't really do the job for us. The lambs were only meant to represent something, or someone, I should say. So in the next question, the we see this, question 13, can we pay this debt ourselves? As sinners, can we pay the debt before God that we owe? The answer is certainly not. Actually, we increase our guilt every day. We continue to sin. We continue to do, to do bad things, don't we? If you're, if you're anything like me, I know that every day there are things where I think I should not have done that. Or I think I, I should have done what I didn't do. I should have done something that God was calling me to do, and I, I failed to do it. And so the next question, question 14, begins to dig into how this uh, can be 
helped and alleviated by God. So the question is this, can another creature, any at all, pay this debt for us? So humans have sinned. Can another creature like a squirrel or an octopus or a zebra, can, can these creatures pay our debts? Can a lamb pay our debts? And the answer, again, is no. To begin with, God will not punish another creature for what a human is guilty of. So humans have sinned before God. Therefore, humans need to be saved by a human. Besides, no mere creature can bear the weight of God's eternal anger against sin and release others from it. So what this is saying is that God's anger against sin is so great that a mere human, just like me and like you, would not be able to bear the full weight of God's wrath against sin. And so the 15th question, the last question from today, asks us, what kind of mediator and deliverer should we look for then? So who should we be looking for? Who can be our mediator? Which means who can be that middle person between God the Father and us? Who can step, uh, step between us and mediate the situation? Or deliverer, who can deliver us from this great uh, problem, this great issue that we have between ourselves and God? We need help. We need someone who is a human, but is in a sense more than a human, because no mere human like me or like you could withhold all of God's judgment. And so, Neither could a squirrel. A squirrel couldn't do this. A beaver couldn't do this. Any kind of animal you can think of could not uh, bear the weight of God's eternal judgment and hatred for evil and sin. And so, again, the question is, what kind of mediator and deliverer should we look for then? And the answer is this. One who is truly human and truly righteous. So, I'm not truly righteous, and you're not truly righteous. So, we need a very special human. Yet, says the Catechism, this person must be more powerful than all creatures. That is, one who is also true God. And so, the Catechism is teaching us here that in order for man to be saved, we must be saved by the sacrifice of a man. But no man like me or like you, and this doesn't mean just men, it means women and girls as well, none of us can bear God's anger against sin in ourselves. If I said I was going to sacrifice my life for all of the world, well, first of all, I'm unrighteous, so I can't do that. But second of all, I am merely a creature. I would no longer exist if God were to judge me for all of the world's sin. And so we need a very special kind of person to do this. And I'm sure you could probably guess who this is. His name is Jesus. And in the weeks to come, we'll be looking at just exactly how Jesus solves this great problem that we have between God and ourselves because of our sin. We'll look at exactly what he does and how his life and his death and his resurrection save us from ourselves, save us from our sin, save us from death, and ultimately save us from hell, where we would be separated from God for all time. So pay attention in the weeks to come. I, I hope you are enjoying these videos. I've been also enjoying putting them together for you guys. So uh, keep, keep watching, follow along, and I look forward to, to keeping these up in the weeks to come. All right, you guys, take care.